Hello, Christian Hacking here from CBR UK, bringing you your weekly abortion news update. Now, there's been two major developments this week, both of them inside the UK courts. Now, the first is that a um, a local uh, judge has upheld a ban on us going into Wolven Forest and showing them what abortion looks like in any large or impactful sense. Um, I know quite a lot about this case because, well, it's all about our organisation and I'm at the centre. <clears throat> the story here is that back in um, October of last year, we were invited into Wolven Forest by a local resident to help educate on abortion, and indeed the specific role that their MP, Stella Creasy, was playing in pushing abortion in Northern Ireland and the UK. Now, um, we went in with peaceable volunteers, the police had been warned, even Stella herself had been warned about our presence. But having arrived, um, 15 to 20 minutes into our second display, the full force of the council fell down upon us. I was issued with an ASBO, or a CPN, um, Community Protection Notice, and our um, images and banners were quickly confiscated. Um, one of them of Stella Creasy and another of a 24-week-old baby girl, which they b admitted was illegal for them to do in the court. Um, now, um, unfortunately, yesterday we heard that this ban, um, which prohibits me from going back, not just with living, um, uh, with dead fetal images, but living ones too, has been upheld. Now, I mean, it's wrong on a whole variety of levels. One, it throws free speech under a bus. Two, it throws um, political speech, which is the highest um, and most protected form of free speech, under a bus. Um, but three, it, al it allows people like Stella Creasy to get off the hook. Now, a number of people have texted me kind of saying, you know, are you OK? Sorry to hear about the news. Don't worry. We and I at CBR UK are not discouraged. This is the path of social reform history. Courts are where you fight battles peacefully. And so we're not discouraged, primarily because this case is doing exactly what it needs to do, which is exposing the reality of abortion and the tactics used to protect the abortion trade. Having stated in his judgment um, that this case wasn't about the rights and wrongs of abortion, the judge actually states on page 17 that the image of abortion is, I quote, um, uh, graphic, upsetting, sickening, disturbing, anxiety-inducing, frightening, and horrific, end quote. Now that really begs a question, doesn't it? Which is, if abortion is all those things, why is it legal? Why is Stella Creasy pushing for it? And why um, are the council trying to stop people from educating on it? But it also raises a more subtle point, which is if that if that is what people's reactions are to seeing abortion, then surely people at large don't really know what abortion is. You see, we are willing to see graphic images on our cigarette packets. We're willing to be confronted by sad images of the immigration crisis in our newspapers. This people accept as having a moral value, even if they're upsetting. But when it comes to abortion, we won't have a bit of it. Why is that? That's a question that needs to be taken to a higher court to be analysed and discussed. And that's exactly what we intend to do with our help, with the help of our friends at Christian Legal Centre. Now this leads me on briefly onto another court case that's happened this week, which is a woman is suing a health regulator um, for not n being told that her baby um, felt pain when it was aborted at 23 weeks. So this woman is called Anne Marie Tudor. She had her baby aborted at BPAS in Richmond in 2017, yet in that whole consultation and procedural process she was never told A, that her baby could feel pain when it was aborted and B, that it could survive outside of the womb. So she's wanting to see change um, in the legislation and in the policies so that abortion providers have to tell um, their patients that um, unborn children feel pain. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, whilst um, abortion providers are saying that unborn babies don't feel pain until 24 weeks. However, I've done a little bit of digging on that over the last few days, and so you may be interested to know a few things. One, that assertion is based on one Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists paper from 2010. Just one paper. Secondly, that um, particular assertion is based on another study cited in that paper from 1986 involving a study to do with sleeping fetal sheep, not humans, 
and not undergoing abortion procedures. And thirdly, you need to know that earlier on this year, or sorry, later last year, um, two neurologists, psychiatrists of a pro-choice position published a paper saying that it is good evidence that fetuses can feel pain from plus 12 weeks. Somebody is lying, and I'm assuming it's the people who benefit monetarily from every abortion procedure and want to see it legalised up till birth. Anyway, those are your news and updates with me, Christian Hacking. Thanks for tuning in, and do tune in next week at 5pm for your latest news updates from the UK. Thanks.